Boy, oh boy, ladies and gentlemen. The banking sector is in absolute chaos. And as you all know from watching Game of Thrones, chaos is a ladder. So, First Republic Bank has collapsed in share price by almost 90% year to date off the back of all of the Silicon Valley Bank and all the panic and everything surrounding that situation. Now, here's the question. First Republic may take some hits because of their own liquidity issues that they've been having. Um, it's possible that they may have had to sell some things at unfavorable prices. Their balance sheet may take a hit. Their earnings may take a hit. But the question is, is the hit that they're actually going to take financially going to be proportional to the 90% roughly hit in share price? And do we think that there's um, a real chance that they go to zero? Both questions need to be considered when, con when thinking of whether or not you want to try to climb this chaos ladder, okay? So, I will say... <clears throat> The um, the bank has received thirty billion in uninsured deposits from a few of the largest banks out there. So Bank of America, Citigroup, J.P. Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, Bank of New York Mellon, PNC Bank, State Street, Truist, and U.S. Bank. They all basically each pitched in a few billion. Um, just to put it on deposit with uh, First Republic Bank because they're like, hey, you know, we feel like long term the money is safe. It's just the liquidity might be a little bit at issue and we want to make sure that we calm things down. They're basically doing this so that the so-called contagion does not spread and that there isn't a run on this bank that leads it into the same situation that Silicon Valley Bank ended up in. Now, <clears throat> when you look at the um, the balance sheet real quick here, um, you can see that cash and equivalents from 2021 to 2022 went down. And this is uh, as of the latest 10K, which was filed in February of this year, um, which means in order to what they had available basically on hand to cover deposits had gone down while at the same time the deposits themselves which are obligations have gone up right so the proportion of liquidity compared to deposits went in a direction that's a little bit scary when right around this same time frame the silicon valley bank fiasco was unfolding it's clear why there would be some fear in the air with regards to this bank bearing that in mind also bearing in mind that um, this bank happens to cater to high net worth individuals those individuals being high net worth may have on deposit with this bank an amount of money that exceeds what the fdic insures per person per bank and realizing that their money potentially is at risk some portion of those individuals may have or may in the future decide that they want to rush to the bank and you know pull the bulk of those deposits out and and put them somewhere else because of the fact you know that they're concerned about this liquidity and in order to be like a stopgap to make sure that this doesn't get as bad as it could those banks chipped in <clears throat> i mean you if you if you look at all these numbers and you suddenly add you know 30 billion both to the deposits which realistically those banks aren't going to just randomly pull those deposits since they're doing it sort of as a quasi bailout essentially but then you also add the 30 billion to their cash well suddenly the ratio doesn't look quite as scary right um now if you think that this bank probably won't go to zero, but 
suspect that maybe they had to sell some of their debt securities for a loss, for example. Um, again, to you know increase that liquidity and um, avoid a cat, uh, you know, the absolute worst catastrophic um, scenario. You have to ask yourself how much is it really going to hurt them. Hard to say. I don't think we'll have a clear picture of that until the next earnings report comes out. But as of the time of this particular 10K, they had on the balance sheet over $17 billion, nearly $17.5 billion in shareholders' equity. Okay. Um, now, after the most recent sell off, the market cap is around $2.5 billion, which means every $1. Um, of stock currently represents about seven dollars worth of shareholders equity on the balance sheet um, one of the biggest disconnects I've seen um, ever I think all right so we have to ask ourselves you know if you're considering possibly doing a purchase on something like this there's you know three possible scenarios here one is that the market grossly overreacted how bad this is going to affect the bank financially. Um, and in this case, obviously it doesn't go to zero. And um, in that instance, if the market did overreact, there would be an opportunity to um, take advantage of an inefficiency in pricing and potentially have an outsized return. Second scenario, market got it right and it's not going to zero, but it's taking a massive hit on the balance sheet and the earnings. And, um, you know, basically, it's roughly fairly valued right about now. Okay, that would be the second scenario. Third scenario is that actually, it's even worse than it looks. And it's going to zero and or, you know, going lower than it is or potentially, you know, as low as zero. And, you know, it's going to just be a, a bad idea all around, okay? That's the third scenario. When considering what to do, you have to think of those three scenarios and try to figure out which one is the most likely. Now, uh, b -b 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 I was looking at the uh, risk factors in their own words as of this um, 10K that they had released most recently. And kind of funny in some ways, right? So they give everything from earthquakes to terror attacks as possible risks and those kind of things right like let's say the next 9 11 happens or something right that's going to affect the whole market that's not a risk that's specific to any one company so when a company puts things like that in their risk factors it's not that they think those things are going to happen necessarily they're just covering their bases um and that like that's just not something that I really take all that seriously. Um, now they do talk about, you know, the concentration of their loan portfolio in single family residential. Okay, yeah, that's like, a, you know, potentially a lack of diversification or what have you. Um, they talk about interest rate. Um, oh, yeah, downgrades in the US government credit rating. That would be bad for everybody, not just these guys. Okay. Um, Let's see. Weakness in the real estate market. Yeah, I guess if they have a lot of their um, loan portfolio portfolio tied up in um, real estate, that weakness in that market could hurt that. Um, again, uh, interest rate risk. Um, let's see. There was one more down here. Liquidity risk. Okay, that they made that its own separate category. So we are subject to liquidity risk, which could impair our ability to fund various obligations. That's what we were looking at before on the balance sheet. That relatively low amount of cash that they had compared to the amount of deposits that they had means if more of these high net worth individuals they cater to come a knock in for their money and they don't have it well, all of a sudden this bank collapses, right? It's just that simple. Now, 
a lot has happened since this um, has been released. You know, the, the last few weeks have been pretty eventful. Um, and I think as of this moment, it's probably pretty unlikely that they go to zero. Um, the banking system as a whole seems really, really motivated to stop this whole contagion effect and to prevent this bank and others from collapsing and going the same way as Silicon Valley. So I think this is a potential opportunity. Um, I'm still on the fence about it and mulling it over, but um, I definitely want to look at it more in the coming days and really try to understand what moves they've been making in the last few weeks. And if, to me, if it looks like the market has overreacted, I might take a small position here um, just because of how big the potential outsized return is and how overblown the fear may potentially be. So let me know in the comments below what you think is going to happen with First Republic Bank. And don't forget to diamond hand that like button. Subscribe if you want more, and I'll talk to y'all later. Have a wonderful Easter and peace out.